Hi YouTube! Today I will continue my series about GNU slash Linux and PCI, PCI Express. So in my previous video we have written a simple Linux kernel module for this PCI to parallel ports adapter. And our Linux kernel module um, searches for a device with the vendor and device ID of this card here. It um, enables the PCI device and then it will access some of its configuration space registers. And today we will go one step further and access its I.O. space. So we will actually read and write something from the parallel port here. And here you can see I have built this little board here to test everything. Here I have a seven segment of display and five dip switches. And the goal for today is to write a Linux kernel module which reads um, the state of the dip switches every five seconds and then will, it will set a my seven segment of display here according to the value of the dip switches. But before I start I will briefly explain to you how a parallel port works. So to break it down a parallel port are just three 8-bit registers. The first 8-bit register is connected to five digital outputs and I have connected them to my seven segment of display. The second byte is connected to five um, to five digital inputs with internal pull-up resistors. So I have connected these dip switches to the um, to the inputs, and if the pins are in this state here, um, they are, um, all pins are connected to zero, and if the pins are in the other state here. Um, the pin is now floating and because of the internal pull-up I will now read in a uh, 1. Okay. And the last um, of the three 8-bit registers is just uh, is connected to four more digital outputs, but on my board I haven't I don't use use them. So yeah, and that's it. Very simple, isn't it? But if you want to get more information about how a parallel port works and how to access it with Python. I've made a video about it. Of course, I will put the link into the description. So here I'm connected to a PC in which my PCI to parallel port adapter is plugged in. And now I will navigate into my programming folder and the folder of my Linux kernel module. And if we look into this folder here, we see here we have our source file for our kernels module and here is a make file to build it. So let's open it up. Okay, here we are now. And if you remember my file from my last video, you have seen I've already changed a little bit here. So the first thing I've added is I've already implemented a timer so I can read in and write out the data every 200 milliseconds. And I won't show you how to do this in this video because I've already made a video about it. I will put the link into the description. But what we need here are these two include files here. Here I've added a, my, a struct for my timer I want to use. Down here is a callback function which is called when the timer expires. Down here I've added the values for a seven segment of display. For example, if I want to display a zero on the seven segment of display, I have to write out 63 on my data byte. And down here I'm restarting the timer, so it will be triggered every 200 milliseconds. And to use the timer, I have to initialize it, and this is done in my module init function here. So down here are the two lines of codes which I need to set up the timer and to start the timer for the first time. And here in my module exit function, which is called when the module is removed from the kernel, I'm deleting my timer and stopping it if it's still running. Okay. And now the next thing we have to do is we have to add we have to add um, some code to access the O space of my PCI device. So we can directly read the free registers of the parallel port. Okay, for this purpose, I will declare a global pointer up here. Pointer to PCI devices var zero, 
and the register to access the parallel ports interface are on bar zero. I will call this pointer par port bar zero. And here I'm using um, this macro here to um, tell the program, hey, this is a pointer to I.O. memory. Okay, now here in our initialization module, I have to request and map the mod, um, bar zero to my CPU's address space. So request and map bar zero. Okay, for requesting, I will need the function PCI request region. And as an argument, I need the pointer to my PCI device, which is pointer here. The next argument is the number of the bars I want to request, which is zero in my case. And the last argument is a string. I will call it PCI power port bar zero. And this string, um, you can see this string after loading the kernel module in the file slash proc slash IO ports. And over this, you can identify the IO port which is assigned to, um, which is assigned in our kernel module or which is requested in our kernel module. Okay, and if I get a, um, if this function returns zero, everything worked and we have successfully requested um, the bar zero of my PCI device. But if we get a value greater than zero, an error occurred. And a possible cause for this error is there is already a Linux kernel module which is using this memory. So in this case, I will print out PCI power port, could not request bar zero, um, maybe already used. And I will exit from my kernel module with minus one. Okay, but in case it returns zero, um, we are here now and we can now map our memory. For this, I will use the function PCI IO map, and as an argument, I need the pointer to the PCI device, the number of the bar, and the last argument is the amount of, by of um, bytes I want to map. So I could just write a 2 here because we will only access 2 bytes, but I will request the whole bar, and there is a nice function which will return the size of a bar. And this function is called PCI resource len. And as an argument, it needs the device we're interested in and the bar we're interested in. So in our case, this should return 8 because bar 0 is 8 bits big. OK, and that's it for the initialization routine. But of course, if we are requesting memory, we have to free memory when we are leaving. Um, our kernel module, and we can do this with the function PCI release um, region. And as an argument, we need a pointer to our PCI device and the number of the bar we want to release. So now the memory is available back for the system. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do is we have to, we have already requested and mapped the memory, but we haven't accessed it. So let's do this. So the first thing we are going to do is I will read dip switches and I can read them with the function I will read 8 because we want to read a 8 bit value here and the argument we have to pass here is our pointer and because I want to read the second 8 bit register I have to increment my pointer by 1. And now the value will be stored in my rec value, register value variable here. And this is a little bit weird. Um, on this PCI port, 
where I, um, the digital inputs are mapped to the most significant bits. So I have to um, shift, um, left, right shift this value by three. And now what I can do now is I can write the value back. The first argument here is the value I want to write, which is display register value. Okay. And the second argument I need here is um, my pointer. Okay, so here we are writing to seven segment display. Okay, and that's it. That should be the code for our simple Linux kernel module. So let's try to build it and see if I made a mistake here. Oh, okay. Okay, two mistakes here. Of course, it has to be IO write 8, and here I have a typo. So let's correct it. Okay, let's try it again. Looks good, and now let's try to load the module. I will use insmod to load it. And now we are getting an error. So let's check the kernel's log. And here we can see could not request bar zero may be already in use. So it seems there is already a Linux kernel module using this IO space. So let's search all of the Linux kernel modules which are running for the term parallel port. And here we see there are three um, modules which could be using the um, parallel port. So I will remove all of them. Pop up PC, ppdev, and power port. And now we'll try to load my module for a second time. Okay. And now we are getting the value 8. And this is because I set this dip switch to 1. Okay, now we have a 0 here. Sorry. This dip switch should, should set a 1. Okay, you can see. maybe now it's a little bit better. Yes. Now I should get a 3. Looks good. I know it's a little bit hard to... Ah, that's good. If I switch this dip switch, I should get a 7. And if I switch this dip switch down here, I should get an F because I haven't connected the sec the second dip switch here, so everything seems to work. Cool, isn't it? And now I want to show you one last thing. I've already mentioned we should be able to see um, the requested um, port in the file proc io ports. So let's take a look at it and search for the term PCI power port. So here we can see we have um, PCI power port bar zero. This is a string and the io addresses for it are these addresses here. And if we use um, our program to display um, uh, the PCI header of a device. I have it here, right here, PCI header, and I need to specify the bus, now, um, bus function, bus device and function number here. And if I execute it here, we can see in bar one we have exactly the same value. Only the, the least significant bit is different, and this is because the least significant bit um, indicates whether this is an I.O. Um, memory bar or um, I.O. bar or memory bar. So these are exactly the same values. So indeed, inside the base address registers, the um, addresses which are assigned by the operating system are stored. Okay, that's it for today. I think we have written a quite nice driver 
for this little board here. I hope you've learned something and I will see you in my next video.